Hey guys, Mike here from Caption Kitchen once again. Today's video is an exciting one. It is actually one that you guys have recommended for me to do and I'm quite excited to do it. Today's video is going to be about sharpening your knives and it is the first video out of many that I'm going to do. If you have any ideas, subscribe and also put in the comments so that we can build this channel and I can do stuff for you guys based on what you need. So. Today's video, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a typical style knife, which is, as you can see, this is our Gyoto. This is the, uh, it is a VG10 core uh, Damascus plating, so not, not that the Damascus matters for sharpening, but it is a VG10 core um, with our uh, resin handle, Mashiro style, well, Mashiro model. Um, most of you guys are going to be familiar with this one. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go over a few... Um, different things that you can sharpen your knives with. So as most of you know, there's things such as a sharpening stick. You guys are going to see some sharpening stick out there that are ultimately just a metal stick like a metal rod or now they make them in ceramic as well. I don't recommend those so let's move away. Secondly, what you guys are going to see, which I do have myself and I'm going to hide the brand here, is these little guys. So Amazing, you know, they say that you can get those as cheap as five dollars up to the amazing ones for a hundred dollars that can do the job. I don't recommend them. First of all, in order to have a proper blade, you need to have your angle of the knife consistent when you sharpen. When you have a stick going from one side to another, while it's great and it will do the trick, it will not hold consistency in the angle that you have in your blade and your blade will end up having little warps and little grooves as you move forward. The sharpness on a stick won't be as good either as on a whetstone that I will be showing today. Secondly, what I was just showing is one of these little guys and I'm trying to hide the brand. This one, um, not that you can't hold a consistent angle because as you can see, the angle is already there, but based on personal experience and also some feedback out there, uh, these things actually tend to chip the blade of some of the knives, um, especially when you go into quality Japanese knives that are very, very thin at the bottom. This is a blade killer, not a blade sharpener. Do not use it. Please don't use it. Then what we're going to move into is that the, sh the whetstones, basically. That's, that's what I recommend. That's what I'm going to show you how to work with today. We do sell our own whetstones on our website. And here is the kit that you can basically get. I will be putting the link in the description. And this is not a video to sell our kit because there's tons of, out there. But here's what you would get with us. So ultimately, you get a nice little stand. You get your whetstone. Your whetstone is a double-sided whetstone that has a, I'm not sure if you guys can see, um, 1,000 1000 and 6,000 grit. 6,000 grit is ultimately to maintain your blade. 1,000 is ultimately to truly sharpen your blade. So what we did is that when we designed this block, we made it so that it's reversible and it's just one, so it's super easy to store and you have both in case you need them. What comes with our kit as well will be the little rubber mat. The rubber mat will make it so that when the stone is wet, as you can see here, oh, sorry, the other side, uh, can I put this here? Uh, let's do that. So with this, the, the stone won't slide. It will grip onto the surface that you have. So this is great. The next thing that we have here um, is the little case, and this is how I showed it to you guys. So when you remove this, this is kind of your storage area. So within your storage area, you will have a little pipette that you can grab water with. I'm um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I wasn't checking the camera. <laughs> um, that you can grab your water with so that you keep your stone wet as, you, um, as you're sharpening. You will have your angle guide as well. And in this, and I will show you guys in the other kit, but um, this is uh, your little stone so that you can um, resurface your main stone and also create some mud so that you have truly fine, fine um, sharpening or, yeah, technically fine sharpening 
uh, that's going to be higher grit than the 6,000 um, that we have on the actual oh, on the actual stone. So this is the little kit as I got as I have shown you guys. It comes in a nice gift box as well, and it's super easy to simply put somewhere, and everything is hidden. So you ha you don't have all of these things in your drawer; they're basically hidden. So great little kit. Um, so I'll be using mine. This has been used for approximately a year now. So as you can see, after a year, this is what it looks like. It's still alive. It's heavily used and it's still in perfect condition. So I'll be using our home little guinea pig here that we got on day one before we ordered um, all of the, uh, the other samples that we have. So I'll put this aside, put the knife aside, and I'll show you a few things. This is what you will get from competitors. The end. You will get a stone. Yeah, this one is actually double-sided, but I don't know which side is what. Um, it doesn't come with anything to actually hold it. It comes with nothing. So, you know, you can get a stone. <laughs> the stone itself, let me just put this up. The stone itself does the same thing as our stone. I'll be honest, the majority of the time, a stone will be a stone. The kit is what makes a difference. The other competitor, and I'm going to try to hide, but it comes in the box. <laughs> and when you pull it out, and I'll try to make it that you don't see the brand, here's another kit. So this is what you get from a competitor. Once again, nice box, stone, that's it. So. All I'm saying is that for the price, you can get a nice kit and I'll show you how to use that nice kit today. So let's get into it. First thing first, I'm gonna lower the camera here and I'm gonna be doing this video in little snippets because, let me just do this, here we go. We'll need to do something. And first thing first is grab a bucket of water that is large enough to fit your whetstone. Grab your whetstone and drop it in. Take a look what it does. I'm sure you guys can hear it. So we will we will leave it like that for approximately 15 minutes and I'll truly do it. Like I'm gonna pause the video and you know you guys it's not gonna be a pause for you guys, it's gonna be a pause for me. Um We'll leave it in there for a good 15 minutes until there's no more bubbles. Ultimately, what it's doing is that the whetstone is um, absorbing all of the water so that when we when we sharpen the blade, we're creating kind of mud. And as we're as the stone is drying from sharpening, we will be grabbing this little guy and adding more water onto the stone. So first thing first is the pause and I'll be back in 15 minutes once the stone has soaked all of the water 15 minutes later okay we are back and here's what it looks like after it's, it's not 15 it's approximately 10 minutes but as you can see the whetstone is no longer bubbling because now it is soaked and it is full of water it has released all of the air so we will grab our little stand that we had and I'm gonna do this. So grab the stand. Grab, uh, grab uh, anything that, you know, so that you don't wreck your um, countertop. And what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna start with the 1000. I'm gonna show you how to sharpen from 1000 to 6000 ultimately. But if you're doing this regularly, a few, um, you know, a, a few passes on a 6,000 from one side, a few passes on the other side for 6,000 regularly will do the trick. Usually you have to go back down to 1,000 and then back to maybe 3,000 or 6,000 when the blade is in the worst condition, let's say. Um, 1,000 definitely removes a bit of the, the metal. 6,000 mainly maintains it. It does not remove a lot of metal. So be careful how often you use the 1,000. But I'm still going to show you what we're going to do. So we're on the 1000, uh, 1000 side. And we will grab our knife. Within our kit, if ever you are more or less a beginner, what we include is one of these things, which is a guide. The guide 
I'll be honest, it's not something that is amazing long term. There's nothing better than holding the actual stone with your bare hands and being able to gauge your angle. What this does is instead of trying to calculate with the measuring tape your angle, all you do is you, I'm not sure if I can show you guys, slide your blade into this. And what it does, it provides you with a 15 degree angle. 15 degree is ultimately the angle that, and I'll put this back up, 15 degrees is ultimately the angle that most of the knives are sharpened at. So 15 degrees on one side, 15 degrees on the other side. And this is considering that your knife is a double bevel, meaning that it has two sides that are sharpened. There are some knives that are single bevel and only have one side that is sharpened on a more aggressive angle. Those knives will require a different technique than I'm going to show today. The technique that I'm showing you guys today is for the most typical knives, which are double bevel and that are sharpened around the 15 degrees, um, so 15 degree angles. So I'll go back down here. And the trick now is we're going to be starting with the 1000 and it's go in sections. So as you can see, I'll make sure that my tip here is on the stone and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sharpening like this. So when you're going forward, you release pressure. When you're going back, you add pressure. So release, add, release, add, release, add. And I'm showing you slowly as you move forward and you get better with this, you're going to see that it's going to be much, much faster. And I'll show you guys without this in a few minutes. So ultimately, this is what you would do. Then you can move and do it again. When you know that the blade is ready to be turned over or that you can slide forward, you can grab your finger and try to rub it against the edge like this. Not, not backwards, sorry, not backwards, but like this. And once you see, so ultimately I am sharpening this side, once you feel that there is a tiny little edge that's starting to build up, that means that the angle is ready. And I'm going to post a picture right here. It's going to show you guys what the blade does and why then we need to turn around and do it on the other side. So ultimately, let's do it together. So, and now I, I see that the stone is drying up. So I'll grab this, grab some water. There we go. Can't put too much water. Don't be scared. Now, what pressure to apply? The pressure is don't go too hard, but at the same time, do apply some pressure. The pressure will depend on the type, the steel that you have. Some steels are going to be harder. Some steels are going to be softer. So your pressure will definitely, you know, need to be adjusted towards um, that. What you can look at is, as you can see, right here I have the little gray it's basically metal that is starting to come off the blade so that means that I'm using a good pressure that means that it is doing something that it is sharpening so I'll continue to do that and same thing for the tip the tip I would definitely go a bit slower And don't be afraid to just take your time. Don't rush this. Your first time will take you a good half an hour. Your second time might take you 20 minutes. And once you're, once you're used to it, it's a quick three to five minutes, not even, and you're good to go. So what I'll do is I'll remove the guide. And what I'm going to do is now that I know what approximately the angle is, because I learned it by looking at the angle with my guide, is I'm going to do it by hand. There's several techniques 
there's a technique that you're going section by section, and there's some techniques that people do it like this. The important part is that your hand stays steady, and the angle at the back, and I'm going to turn, turn here, the angle remains steady as well. Because if you're sharpening and you're going like this, you will never sharpen the blade. So consistency in the angle is key. What I do is I grab the knife like this. And with my fingers, I apply the pressure. So I'm going to do it a few times. And guys, this is going to take practice. Don't believe you're going to be an expert the first time or second time. The guide is excellent to guide you. And as you know, you're you're becoming more and more comfortable and faster, you will know what angle to hold and you're gonna do exactly like me. So as you can see, take a look at the metal that's coming off. That means that it is sharpening. I'm gonna add a bit more water to this. And what I'm gonna do is since I've been sharpening like this, I'm gonna feel the blade like that. Just to see if I can feel that there's a difference between one side and the other. Ultimately, it, the, the blade is, start, is going to start curving on itself on one side, and we're going to correct that by sharpening it on the other side in a few. So let's do that. I'm going to go like this a few times. Again, stay consistent. Make sure you apply good pressure. I'm going to feel it once again. And I can feel that there's starting to be a difference here. So VG10 is actually a very, very um, hard um, steel. So it might take a bit more pressure than some of the other steels. It truly depends what your knife is made out of. So, you know, that's something I can't comment on. So now I can feel that there's definitely a difference. And what I'm going to do is instead of sharpening on this side, I'm going to sharpen on the side that it has the logo now. So same thing, same technique. Ultimately, what we're going to be doing is sharpening. Sorry, let me just set myself up. go so as you can see once you get the technique and you have consistency in your angle you can go much faster and take a look at the metal then that is coming off of the blade so that's good so I applied way more pressure on this side so now I do have a little furl on this side so what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna start counting so I'm gonna go back onto the other side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to do the exact same thing ten times on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to stop the video and we're going to have to do this again and on the other side, nine times like this, nine times like that. Flip it around nine times, like, then eight times like this, eight times like that. Seven, seven. It does, sound, it does sound like it's long to do, but once you master the technique and you're a bit faster at doing it, like I said, it's a matter of a few minutes. So I'm going to pause it. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'll come back and we're going to do the 6,000 real quick. That's going to give it a nice little polish. And I'll show you guys how to do that. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. So I've done it basically 10 times one side, 
10, 9, 8, up to 1. What I'm going to do now is I will grab the stone and we'll flip it around. This is the 6,000 side. Once again, grab this little guy, put some water, and we're back to square one. However, we don't have to, you know, take our sweet time to do it. This is the 6,000 side. Um, it does not remove as much metal. So as you can see, doing it a few times on one side, a few times on the other side. And when you're doing this, make sure that your pressure is consistently applied. And that's why I have all of my fingers on the blade so that as the blade is sliding, I can apply different pressure onto the blade so that, you know, once I'm sharpening here, that my pressure is not all on this finger. It has to follow the blade. So I'm going to continue to do it that way. Be sure that you're doing it evenly across the entire blade. And as you can see, the white is becoming gray. And that's because we are removing some of the metal. So once you're done ultimately doing all of the, you know, the, it, it truly depends. Like I told you guys, I give you guys a guidance of a guideline of 10, 9, 8. It all depends on your steel. So you're going to have to try a few different techniques based on the knife that you have. You know, you will feel how the knife is sharpening itself. Like right now, it's truly like mine is like razor, razor sharp. When I feel it, however, I can feel that it's twirling a bit onto this side, meaning that I need to focus a bit more sharpening this side. And this is easy to feel with basically just your fingers. Feel one side, feel the other, you will feel a difference. So ultimately, if ever you feel that your, your blade is curving onto one side, just go and do it a few times on the other side. When you're starting, I highly, highly recommend, and I should have said this earlier, to mainly focus on the 6,000 grit. Do not worry about the 1000 until you have truly mastered this or that your blade truly, truly needs it. The 6000 is definitely a, a great, um, a great stone, a great grit. So you can, I'm not sure where the microphone is, but super sharp. Okay. So. I've gone through the the six the the one thousand and the six thousand. Next step is part of your little collection kit. You have another stone. I'll soak the stone and I'm gonna rub it across the six thousand side. What I'm doing now is I'm creating paste. It is paste from the metal, so combination of the the metal and also of the stone. What it's going to do, it's going to polish the blade even further. So all of the black that you see on the stone, leave it there. This is good. So there you go. And don't be afraid to apply some pressure. You're going to see some of the, the dark come out. And here we go. So now it's gray. I'm not sure if the light is doing justice here. But we're back to... Light pressure, one, two. I'm gonna do it a few times on this side. Very light pressure. The other side. Very light pressure once again. You're going to see the gray. You're going to see the metal on your stone. That is normal. That is a good sign. That means you are doing something, actually. So that's good. There we go. And I'll do it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's say one. And one. There we go. So, 
stone, stone. What I can do is I can just wash it and dry it. Here we go. So we should be good to go. I don't have any soap or any clean water. Let's take a look at the blade. Oh. The blade is still beautiful. So don't believe that you know you're gonna wreck your blade or anything like that. If you go to um, important to know, um, if you're going with something a bit too aggressive and your angle is too small, it can happen that you will actually scratch your knife. And that's why I found that it's super important, especially for people that start to have a guide. If you do it with the guide and you do it properly, you will not scratch your blade. And as you start learning the angle of your knife or the angle of the, the 15 degree angle, you will be able to keep that consistent with your hand without being afraid to actually scratch the blade. So if you're new to this, use the guide. It is not the ultimate long-term solution. I would not recommend it forever. This is a good teacher <laughs> to show you um, to show you the way. Um, as you get more comfortable, definitely remove it. Take your time, go slow. As I mentioned, it might take you a good half an hour, 45 minutes, hour. Sit in front of the TV. Make sure you have proper light. Take your time. Try it. Go ahead. Feel the bevels. Make sure that you don't have an edge on one side that is, you know, a bit more aggressive than the other one. That you don't feel like you have, I think they call it a burl, and I'll have to probably write it if I'm incorrect. So, let me go grab something to chop yeah i'll go grab something to chop and um to cut and actually see if it's sharp if we did something so i'll be right back okay so i'm back and this is called improvising i knew i was going to make this video didn't plan it didn't write anything but i have a blank piece of paper and no it's not to write what to say but it's to see if what we just did is sharp Not bad. Next, what do I have is, since it can do the paper test, let's grab a tomato. No. And let's see what how we can slice through. Amazing, absolutely amazing. So, This is what a hundred dollar knife can do. Not bad, right? Let's try it again. And another piece. Sure, the tomato is moving. Like it's not a huge tomato to, and I didn't, you know, pressure it against the counter, but $100 knife, guys. Yeah. Oh, it's lighting a little. But ultimately, you know, take a look. So, Ultimately, sharpening your knife properly and without invent, you know, without having to spend hundreds and thousand dollars into a knife. Sure, I'll have to agree that some of the more expensive knives that we have take less time to sharpen. Um, Sometimes they will also hold their edges a bit longer. So once again, and I don't want to get into necessarily um, price and you know quality and everything like that, but 
ultimately what I wanted to say is that if you go with a more expensive knife, the majority of the time the edge is going to hold a bit longer. Um, the edge is also going to be a bit thinner towards the end, so it's going to be a bit more sharp as well. You know, there are some pros um, and some cons, actually, of having a more expensive knife. Um, the blade will be a bit more razor sharp. However, it will be a bit more prone to breaking when you cut stuff that is a bit more hard. So ultimately, as you can see, the sharpening kit that we sell $49 and that again, this is not to sell our product because you can get sharpening kits from anyone else for around 50 bucks. Um, they do the job quite well. And the $100 knife does the trick as well. As you can see, we have managed to cut very, very thin slices without even holding the tomato. Sure, I'm going to have some of our knives that are going to do a slightly better job. Like the tomato is not going to move as much. However, this is what you get. So, I'll start, I'll stop blabbing. And what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to end this video. I would definitely like to hear some feedback. What do you guys think? Did I say too much? Not enough. Is there anything you want clarification on? I'll be more than happy to answer all of your questions via email as well. But do me one favor. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing more of those. Um, tons of videos, tons, tons of little podcasts to make you guys learn what you can do with some of the knives and some of the products. Um, so, yeah, this is it. It is late enough Saturday night. So I truly hope that the video is going to come out tonight or worst case on Sunday tomorrow. Once again, thank you very much for watching and until next time.